Hey everybody, Johnny here. I got a request to do a video about doing circular arrays with geometry nodes. While you could do circular arrays with the array modifier and an object offset, doing it with geometry nodes is even easier. I'm going to go over the absolute basic way you can set up a circular array using geometry nodes. So let's get into it. Here I've modeled a simple propeller that I want to array in a circle. In addition, I want these fan blades to be contained within a loop, and I want that loop to have this profile shape. So if we were to look at a cross section of the object, it would look something like this. Here I've got a default cube with a default geometry node set up on it. I'm going to cut this connection, and I'm going to start by adding a curved primitive circle. I'll connect that up, and then I'm going to add a point instance node. I'll choose my propeller, and as you can see, we get way too many propellers, and they're all pointing in the same direction. Let's take care of the number of propellers first. Let's drop it down to six. The next thing that we need to do is point them in the correct direction. We'll do this by adding a point align rotation to vector node, and put it before our point instance. However, the question is, how do we get them to point out in the right directions? We're going to do this by changing the vector that this is aligning to. For a moment, I'm going to get a little mathematical. I'm going to connect my curve back to my geometry output. This is our basic curve. Since our curve resolution is 6, there are 6 points that are being generated. Rather than thinking about a point as just a spot in 3-dimensional space, Think about it in relation to the center point. So, we can draw a line from the center point to each of our points. So the position of our points is actually representing a vector from the 0, 0, 0 point to each of our individual points. We can use these vector lines to align our blades. In the Align Rotation to Vector node, you see that we have an option for vector. If we were to change this vector, you see that it changes the direction of our propellers, but it changes them all in the exact same way. So what we want to do is have this vector be driven by the position of our points. If we change vector from vector to attribute, we can choose the point position attribute as our vector. Here's where this top XYZ and our pivot come into play. This first XYZ is which axis of our propeller we want to align to the vector. Since our propeller is running along the x-axis, that means we want to align the x-axis to our vector. And then to get it lined up, we want to choose which axis it should pivot on. In this case, since the propeller lies on the xy plane, we want it to pivot around the z in order for it to line up. In many cases, you can leave the pivot on auto, and it will give you the results you want. If not, you'll probably need to play with this. Here you can see I've chosen the y-axis of our propeller to be lined up to the vector. So now the propellers are perpendicular to the vector that they belong to. The next thing we wanted to do was add a hub around our propeller, and we were going to use this curve object to do that. So in order to do that, I'll use a curve, curve to mesh object. I'll take a copy of my circle, and put it in the curve to mesh object. I'll drag my Bezier curve into this node tree and connect it as the profile curve. I'll then use the Node Wrangler plugin to join this curve to mesh and this point instance. To do that, I'll do Control, Shift, right click, and drag between these two. Now, there's a few things that have gone wrong here, but we're gonna fix them real quick. For starters, this circle is much too small for this object. So the easiest thing to do is to create another circle and use that, and then change its radius. Moving into front view, I'll use the radius until it's the size that I want. The next thing, of course, is that since I duplicated this curved circle here, its resolution is 6, and that's much too small. So I'm going to bump this up to, say, 64. At this point, I can use the resolution of my first circle to determine how many propellers there are going to be. As a final item, say we wanted to create some bars moving from the outside to the inside. I could create a mesh cube, maybe something like this, and then duplicate my align rotation to vector and my point instance node, 
point this at my new cube, use the original circle, and plug that into my join geometry. You'll see that this didn't work out exactly the way I wanted, because my object isn't aligned in the same way. Here, if I edited my original mesh, I could move it into position. However, you'll notice that there are way too many of these bars, but I want to use the same curve circle to drive these as I did my propellers. One way I can do this is add a curve, resample curve node. This will take my 25 point curve and now reduce it to a 10 point curve. Of course, I can drop this to any amount that I want. And of course, if we wanted to assign materials to certain parts of these, we can add those materials and use a material assign node to put them on. So there you have it, a pretty simple circular array with a couple of different options. Of course, this is just scratching the surface of the types of things you could do with circular arrays, but I hope it inspires you to make something awesome. Thanks for checking out the video. If you're finding my channel helpful, make sure to hit subscribe. So for more simple tutorials and updates about Blender development, stay tuned. But until next time, I'll catch you later.